pray, and read. Now, I'm telling you, this is a structure, and, I, and please listen to me. I know that some people are more structured than others, and I've seen structures for times to be able to hear the Lord, and some are a little too rigid for me, and some are a little too loose for me. So I'm giving you a structure, though, that will work for everyone, although you may adjust it a little bit, okay? Pray and read. Just take some time to pray to the Lord, and to read his word. Let me read you a few verses. Mark 1, 35. Now in the morning, now that's a time, having risen a long while before daylight, he, this is speaking of Jesus, went out and departed to a solitary place. There's a place, and there he prayed. So Jesus set an appointment to meet with his father, and he set a time, and he set a place, and he went out and he prayed. Psalm 119, verse 147, David said, I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. That would be prayer. I hope in your word. That's the word. So prayer and the word of God. Now, let me tell you what to pray about. All right, it's very, very simple. So you're gonna tell me what to pray about? Oh yeah, listen, it's very easy. Pray about whatever's on your heart that day. You don't have to pray about the president that day unless the president's on your heart. You don't have to pray about Gateway Church that day unless Gateway Church is on your heart. Pray about whatever's on your heart. That day, you may have just gotten a phone call from one of your children about something, and that's what's on your heart. That day, you may have just heard something about your job, and that's what's on your heart. Just pray about whatever's on your heart, and just tell God about whatever's on your heart, and then read the Bible somewhere. All right? Now, I've told you the number one question I get asked as a pastor is, Pastor, how do you hear God? And we're talking about that during the series. The number one question I get asked about uh, the Bible and about reading the Bible is where? Where should I read in the Bible? Okay, I'm going to tell you where. Here's my question. Pastor, where should I read in the Bible? You ready? On the inside. That's the best place I've found to read the Bible, all right? Anywhere on the inside is good. You could read a proverb a day. There are 31 proverbs. You read proverbs every month. Many, many people read. If, you're, if it's, if it's uh, October 3rd, they'll read Proverbs 3. And I think it's good to read maybe one chapter in the Old Testament and maybe one chapter in the New Testament. Or you can read through the Bible in a year. There are reading plans to be able to do this. Now, I know that you might come to a place where it says, so-and-so begat so-and-so, and so-and-so -and -so begat so-and-so, and pretty soon, by the way, you will probably begat tired. Uh, but I want to say something to you as your pastor. So I'm saying this in the official role that I have as your pastor. When you come to the begats, I give you permission to skip ahead. Okay? You have permission from a man of God, you can skip ahead, okay? Just read somewhere in the Bible. Read the Gospels, read the, read the book of Acts, read, read, the, uh, read the prophets. Read, just read somewhere in the Bible. I promise you, God will speak to you. Now, here's number four. Listen and write. This is very important. Listen and write. Listening seems to be the hardest thing for us to do. But if we learn to do it, we'll hear God's voice. Now, let me tell you a few things about writing, by the way, listening and writing. Let me read you a few scriptures. I'm going to read the first one out of the message. And by the way, when I say read somewhere in the Bible, it would be good to get a, a New Living Translation or the message or an NIV or something that is a dynamic translation rather than an exact translation because it's easier to read. And this is just reading. This isn't studying. This is reading. So get a version that's easy to read. So this is uh, Psalm 45, 1 from the message. My heart burst its banks. He's talking about his time meeting with God. Spilling beauty and goodness. I pour it out in a poem to the king. Shaping the river into words. Here's what he's saying. When I meet with God, my heart just seems to overflow, and the best thing I can do is just write it in, in a poem. I just write like a, a poem to the Lord, to the King. That's what I do. I just write what I'm hearing. And we have, by the way, 150 of those poems that David wrote right here. 1 Chronicles 28, verse 19. This is David talking about the building of the temple. 
all this, now he's referring to all the details of the temple, all this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me all the works of these plans. Here's what he's saying. When I would meet with God, God would just speak to me about things about the temple, and I would just write things, and as I would write them, I would understand what God was saying. Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, write the vision, and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. The best way I know, now listen, this is very important for me to say this to you, the best way I know to learn to hear the voice of God is to write when you're meeting with God. Write it. Now, let me tell you how to do that, all right? Um, write your prayers. Instead of praying your prayers, write your prayers. Lord, I'm concerned about my daughter. You know that she seems to be going a different way. I pray that you will bring friends around her that will encourage her in the Lord. I pray that God, that the friends that would drag her away, that you would get them out of her life. I pray, Lord, that you will bring back the remembrances of her memories of going to church and your presence are just right. Write your prayers, okay? So write your prayers. Then write what you think. This is important. Write what you think God's answer would be to your prayers. You say, well, how do I know it's God? It's, it, it's really, don't worry about that. What do you think God's will is for your daughter? I love your daughter. I want to see your daughter come back. I will answer your prayers for you. Just write what you think God is saying in answer to your prayers. And then here's another thing you can write. Write what you think God is saying to you through the scripture you read that day. Let's say you read one of the Proverbs and it talked about how a wise man seeks counsel and a wise man holds his tongue and a wise man learns to control the words that he says. So you say, I think, you're right, I think the Lord is saying to me that I should seek counsel in the decisions that are facing me and that I should learn to speak wisdom instead of foolishness. I should, and you just write these things. Listen to me, after a while, you'll be surprised. You will be shocked at how fast you will, you won't even be able to keep up. And many of you have had this experience. God's speaking to you so fast, you can't even keep up fast enough to be able to write what he's saying to you. And then years from now, you'll have volumes. But here's the thing, not just the volumes, you will look back and see how God directed your life. How God helped you make the right decision when you needed to make that decision, and you'll look back and say, thank you, Lord, that I showed up for our appointment. Thank you. Now, let me read you one more verse. 1 Samuel 3, verse 1 says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the, vo and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. I want to zero you in on the word rare. The word of the Lord was rare. Now, this word rare in the Hebrew has the connotation of limited supply. Like we would say something is, in, is rare, it's, it's limited. But that's a secondary meaning. The primary meaning of this word is valuable and precious. The word of the Lord was valuable. It was valuable and it was precious. And another way to really say it was, it was valued. The word of the Lord was valued. People valued hearing the word of the Lord. Now I want to ask you something. Do you really value hearing God's voice?